Hi, I'm Kate. I work here at Native Camper Vans, and as part of the outdoor community, it is our goal and responsibility to help preserve these lands so they can be enjoyed by future generations. As summer rolls around and you're gearing up for adventure, we wanted to discuss the importance of fire safety. Nothing beats curling up next to a fire with a s'more after a long day of hiking, but it's important that you know how to start, tend, and extinguish a fire safely. So we're going to discuss how you can have a safe campfire and why we have fire restrictions. Let's go through the steps on how to build a safe campfire so you're ready for your next adventure. The first and most important step is to always check the fire restrictions of the area that you're going to. Most often there's going to be a smoky bear sign that tell you the fire danger levels in that area but you can also look online or ask a park ranger. Next, you wanna make sure you're setting your fire up in a designated area. National parks and forests will have predetermined spots for you to set up your fire. This will either look like a ring of rocks or an actual metal fire pit. So make sure you're setting your fires up there. To build the fire, you're gonna set up logs in a cone shape and then put the dry material in the center. Then you'll take your lighter, which is included in the van, and ignite the dry materials. It takes some time, so be patient. Give the fire oxygen by blowing on it and adding more dry material when necessary. Once the logs are going, just sit back and enjoy the warmth and make yourself a few s'mores and make sure there is someone to tend the fire at all times. Once the logs are almost out or you're ready to put out the fire, make sure you start off with dumping some water on top of the fire. You wanna make sure that the fire is completely out. There should be no heat or embers anywhere around the fire. You're gonna to have to sit and wait to make sure it is completely out. More often than not, people tend to leave their fires before they're completely extinguished, and this is how wildfires can start. So again, always make sure that your fire is out before you walk away. I had the wonderful opportunity to speak with Tracy LeClaire, the Information Officer of Colorado Division of Fire Safety and Control. She gave great insight into fire restrictions and humans' roles into wildfires. Here's what she had to say. What are some of the key factors to fire safety? So I think the better term would be fire restrictions. What we look at when people are recreating in our national forests, our state lands, and even on private lands, uh, it, it varies by jurisdiction, uh, but it's really important for people who are going out to, whether it's a weekend or a long week, uh, to know before you go and understand what fire restrictions may be in place. Uh, if, if you are in a state park, they may have different fire restrictions than that you would if you went into the national forest. It's just indicative of the current fire conditions. If you are at lower elevations, it's probably going to be warmer, hotter, and drier. So there may be more restrictions in place than there would be if you were up at higher elevations where it's cooler and uh, you know, maybe there may still be some, some snow sticking around into May and June. So what got you, you know, interested in being a part of the world of fire safety? Well, when I was with the sheriff's office, it was something that I, I really enjoyed. Uh, understanding the science behind why we go into restrictions. It's not just a, a subjective decision. It's a decision that's made uh, by the sheriff as the fire warden of the, the county, but they do that in conjunction with local fire officials, federal fire officials, other conditions, uh, upcoming weather, are we going to have high winds? Are we going to move into red flag warning days where we have hot, dry, windy conditions where any small spark could grow uh, into a large fire very quickly? Uh, we look at, you know, if it's a 4th of July weekend, are we going to have a huge human component in the mountains or in our air recreational areas? And agencies come together, they discuss it. Uh, we start uh, very early in the year when we still have snow on the ground, we start having weekly fire restrictions calls to talk about, uh, you know, what are people seeing? Are we seeing an increase in human caused fires, whether it's campfires left unattended, whether it's uh, a vehicle dragging uh, tow chains? Uh, is it someone with hot brakes who pulls over to the side of the road and the, the brakes catch the, the local vegetation or the, the grassy vegetation on fire? I think it's important to know before you go. It's human nature to think that, oh, it happens to someone else, it doesn't happen to me, um, but, but it does. And 
any fire is controlled until it's not. If if you are going into an area where you you even think it might be a possibility, uh, you know, do some research. We hope this helps you feel more prepared and confident when building a campfire for your next adventure. Click the links below or in the bio to find more resources on wildfire prevention and restrictions. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you have a fantastic day and enjoy the journey.